Welcome to episode four of the Debut Challenge, my Football Manager 2016 England series with a twist, where at the start of the game, when I selected my first side, I wasn't allowed to select any players with caps. So any players that earned an England cap previous to around July 2015 is not allowed to be in this England team ever on this game. So today, we're taking on Germany in a friendly and Croatia in a friendly. And I'll probably then skip through to the European Championship group draw, which is in December. So once again, there's a few new additions to the England squad that I've selected. Now, thank you for all the suggestions of players over the past three episodes. I'm not ignoring you. I am looking at every single player that suggests. Most of them I have already looked at, by the way, and added them to the national pool if they're not already included. But there's a lot of players you're suggesting that just are not playing very well for their club, which is why they're not being put into the team. Uh, I mean, players like Jack Grealish are popular choices, but the fact is that he hasn't done particularly well for Aston Villa so far this season. If he does do well, then he will get a chance in the England team. Uh, players like Jason Punchin, by the way, have now decided to play, is it Jamaica or Barbados, something like that. He's played for a different nation, so I can't pick him now, unfortunately. But all the players in here have been doing pretty well either so far for me as an Eng in the England team or they're playing well for their, for their club and they've pushed themselves into contention. So in goal, once again, we've got Alex Smithies, David Button and Wes Fodderingham, the three best keepers over the past few games for their club and that's why they're included. We've got Michael Keane, Eric Dyer, Scott Dan will be making his debut today, finally, for England after coming back from injury and playing well for Palace over the past few games. Harry Maguire's been doing very well uh, for his club. I think it's Hull. Uh, yeah, Hull City. He's playing well for them. Lately, 7.48 average rating in the Championship, which is why he's pushed himself into the England team. Billy Jones has been playing well for Sunderland at right-back, so he's in the team and will be playing today. Sam Byram, who's is a bit tired. He has been phenomenal for Leeds, by the way. Alex Myatt's also been pretty good. He's really very close to being in the team. Lewis Cook, on the other hand, for Leeds, has been pretty poor, really bad, like a 6.3 average rating this season, which is why he's not in the team, by the way, you Leeds fans that have been suggesting him. But Mowat is close to breaking into the team, along with Byram. Jordan Ives back in the team. Jack Cork's been doing well this season, so he's... Um, got into the team. Mark Noble, captain, has been really good for me as England manager. 7.68 average rating overall in his four England games. Patrick Roberts back in the team after playing well uh, previously and also, although he's not playing a huge amount of first team football for Man City, he's been playing well for the England under 21s when he's played, so he's in the team. Tom Ince has had a really good season with Derby. Ravel Morrison has broken into the team for the first time after doing pretty well for Lazio. Antonio was phenomenal in the last ep episode. 8.10 average rating over the two games, so that's why he's in the squad. James Ward-Prowse has done well for me as well. Uh, not the best average rating, but playing well for Southampton. Benica Fobi has been a popular choice and has broken into the team. His average rating is not great, but recently he's been on real form, scoring 10 goals in 16 games in the Championship. But most of the goals have been recently, which why, is why he's in the England team alongside Troy Deeney, Danny Ings and Charlie Austin up front. A lot of people have been asking about players, players like Will Hughes. Uh, Tyrone Mings, those sort of players, they're injured for ages by the way, which is why they're not in the team and cannot even be considered for the team because they are just completely dead. Anyway, team selection, you can see here I've gone with Smithies in goal because he's been playing well lately. Billy Jones, Dyer, Dan, Creswell, Noble, Ward-Prowse, Ibe, Morrison's playing today, Antonio as the inside forward and Danny Ings up front back in the team. He's been playing well for late of Liverpool lately and hopefully we'll grab some more goals. He only played one game for me so far, and he scored that one goal. So let's see what he can do. I need improvement from Charlie Austin as well. He's not played particularly well. And even if they're playing well for club level, if they come in and don't take their chances, then you know they won't come back again. Charlie Austin needs to score. If he plays today or against Croatia, then we need to, he needs to prove himself. Otherwise, he just... I mean, what's the point of putting him in the team? He may be banging the goals in for QPR, but... If he can't do it for England, then unfortunately, I'd like him as a striker. Unfortunately, he's going to have to be left out. You may have seen that formation there from Germany. That's pretty defensive. And I'm just going for it, to be honest. I'm going attacking. You may be wondering how I've got the real German 
national team, by the way, with the real players. Because on the game, it's unlicensed, but you, there is a way to get around that. So I've done a video showing you how to how to do that. Just check out my channel. So a corner to Germany. They almost open the score in there. Remember, this is a, a much weaker English side against this very strong German team, what you'd be used to. So this is our first real test. Okay, Germany on the attack once again. But here go, here we go. Dyer Jones smashes up the pitch. What was that? No need for that. I haven't got a hat on today. I've had a haircut, so I, I can just don't have to rely on the hat today. Germany saved. That was good. It's Germany. Just calling them all Germany now, these players. I'm just going to go to counter because we've literally done nothing on the ball. They've had nine shots. So if I go counter, then perhaps we can hit them on the break. Okay, we're on the attack with a throw in from Creswell. Antonio back to Noble, into Ward Prowse, through to Ravel Morrison. Ibe, we've opened the scoring against Deutschland. Amazing stuff. Jordan Ibe. There's a random screaming woman celebrating my goal out the window. Let's see this in 3D. Noble into Ward Prowse. Put it through to Ravo Morrison, who found Jordan Ivan. It's practically an open goal for him there. Lovely stuff from Ravo to find him. And we're 1-0 up, but here go Germany straight away on the attack, trying to get back into this. Tony Cruz out wide to Volland. Can Billy Jones get in there? He can't. Uh-oh, looking dangerous. Uh-oh, great save by Smithies. Wow, and a good block from Dyer there as well. Oof. Corner. Ah, Smithies catches. He's done well. Very well. Perhaps he can grab his grab his chance and become the number one. So 1-0 up at half-time, so, somehow holding on against Germany. We've had 17 shots and three clear-cut chances. Been fantastic, really, to... To somehow survive that. Danny Ings isn't having a great game up, game up front by himself. I'm actually going to bring on... Hmm, Afobi's quite tired, as is Austin. I'm going to bring on Dini, who's done well for me, to be fair. Uh, Afobi and Austin will probably get the chance against Croatia. So let's see how Troy Tro Dini does up front. Other than that, I think I'll leave it the same. We'll probably turn down the tempo a bit. And turn off a few things just to, to calm it down but I mean I might as well leave it generally the same because we are holding Germany although they are having a lot more chances than us and more possession I'm gonna make a sub Ward Prowse not having the best of games in midfield 6.7 rating it's okay not amazing though I'm gonna bring on Jack Cork for his debut he's gonna play as a, just a general central midfielder if we can hold on to this win it'd be a famous win I know it's only a friendly but considering the players out there it really would be a famous win and definitely my best achievement so far with England. Let's see if we can hold on though for half an hour. Okay, a throw in in a dangerous position for Germany. This looks very dangerous. Oh, it's blocked Antonio. Can he run, run it clear up to Dini? I think Antonio would have been better off just running it there. And here go Germany on the attack. Muller. Oh, Jones cuts it out. Billy Jones. I used to love him back on FM at 05. Ravel Morrison saved by Neuer. Ooh. We've won a corner. We've only got one man back. They pull everyone back for corners. And a bit um, suicidal, but perhaps we can get a shot away here. Ravel blocked. Everyone get back. Phew. End of highlight. I think I will make another sub. I'm going to take off Antonio and bring on Patrick Roberts, I think. And he will play as a winger. Yeah, just a winger on the left. He's his third appearance for, the, for his... Uh, for his nation, I think. Oh no, this looks dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Oh, Smithy saves. Well done. Mark Noble's on a 7.6, having another cracking game for England. He's been phenomenal for me. Can we hold on for the last three minutes here? Come on. Two and a half. One and a half. One minute to go. It's creeping. Creeping to the final whistle. Surely. Five seconds to go. Get in there, Creswell. Well done. And we've won. We've beaten Germany. Thanks to that first half goal from Jordan Ive. Wow. I don't know how we did that. And I don't think we even got a man of the match from one of our players. It's just a really good team performance. And very pleasing. Very pleased. Boateng was man of the match for Germany, actually. But they had 32 shots to our seven. And, and we won 1 0. <laughs> crazy. Brilliant. But crazy. 
So just having a look, scouting some of the young players, you can see the under-21s beat Croatia under-21s 3-0. Damari Gray, a really popular choice, by the way, from you guys as well. He's on the periphery, having a good season um, in terms of average racing, as you can see there, for Birmingham. Only one goal and one assist this season, but decent average racing in the championship and did manage to score for the under-21s. James Wilson with two goals as well. He's playing. Um, he's not really playing for Man United, to be honest unfortunately but he scored quite a few goals in non-competitive and under 21 games and obviously scored two goals for the under 21 England team as well today so he certainly got a chance of breaking into the team as well Deli Ali has a chance he's already played hasn't he uh, Jack Grealish playing well so perhaps he will be breaking into the team soon but as you can see here only one start and two sub appearances for Aston Villa in the league this season 6.5 average rating which is why he hasn't got into the England team so far, those of you keep, who keep saying, but he's done pretty well for the under 21, 7.16 in the England under 21 team so far this season. There is a worry that he could play for Ireland, but I'm only going to put him in the team if he deserves to be in the team. The same with any of the players that I select. Just realised in the last game I could have made more than three subs, I only made six didn't I? It didn't really matter in the end, I managed to win the game maybe because I kept with a consistent team. but. I'm going to have to make changes today. Aaron Creswell is injured, or partially injured, so Target's going to play. I'm going to play Benick Afobi at the start of the game and probably bring Danny, uh, not Danny Ings, Austin on at some point. That's the wrong player. Come on, Afobi, get in the team. I'm going to play Fodderingham for his second England cap. Michael Keane is going to play at the back instead of Dyer. Who else could I play at defence? Harry Maguire can make his debut. So lots of changes here, and... Uh, we'll play... Oh, Byram's properly injured now, which is annoying. I w wish I could have made a replacement. I'm going to keep with Billy Jones at right back. We'll try him again. James Ward-Prowse. We're going to play Jack Cork instead in the middle. And play him as... Uh, actually, we'll keep him with an advanced playmaker. I'm going to stick with Morrison. Wingers-wise, I will probably make some changes. We're going to bring Tomins into the team. And Patrick Roberts for his fourth England cap on the left hand side or maybe swap them around maybe Ince Roberts on the right and Ince on the left let's go with that okay let's go and beat Croatia then tough game against Croatia they're a very good team as you will all know I'm sure uh, I've gone I thought I'd give Michael Keane another chance at centre back because he had a phenomenal couple of games for me two goals and one assist in his first two games for England wow what a start Let's see, that was a really loud motorbike. Let's see how he gets on. Can he get a third in in three games? That really would be astonishing, but let's see. Michael King, great header there. A, a few managers, club managers have said they only want their players to play for 45 minutes, but to be honest, I've forgotten who they've said. I think there is a facility to be able to see that. I definitely didn't keep to that in the first game. Never mind. I will make more subs today, probably. But, oh, here goes Croatia. Mandzukic, good save. Oh, great save by Fodderingham it was. Rakitic, Croatia have such a good team, don't they? And that time it was going wide and Fodderingham catches the ball. Oh, this could be tougher than the Germany game, actually. Kovacic, Modric, Rakitic, Perisic, Mandzukic. They got Lovren at, back, at the back, though, so there's some hope. Serna at right back, what a legend of the game he is. Okay, a th th uh, goal kick, that's the word, from Fodderingham. Here go Croatia again. Can we get in there and win it back? Keane does well. Ravel into Cork, losing the ball. Uh-oh. Perisic saved by Fodringham easily. We've had zero shots so far. Come on, guys. Pumped up the pitch. Can Afobi get on it? He does win the header, but it's to no one. But here goes Patrick Roberts. What's he going to do? Into Jack Cork. Lovely ball. Cork again. Through to Tom Ince. He scores his first goal for England. Ah, oh, great stuff. We're 1-0 up with our first shot of the game. Cork into Ravel Morrison, back to Jack Cork, who put a lovely little ball, through ball into Tom Ince, who found the back of the net. Free kick to Croatia, then lobbed in. But here goes Tom Ince, heading away. Get in there, guys. Win it back. Close down. Kovacic is dangerous. Billy Jones cuts it out into a phobie. That's a poor ball. Needed to play it out wide left. But here goes Mandzukic, who scores. And it's 1-1. Back in the game straight away, pretty much. It's uh, Mandzukic seems to be deadly on this game, I must say. Fodderingham got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. Free kick to Croatia again. Looking dangerous on the ball, but target cuts that out. Cork wins it. Into Ravel Morrison over the top. Uh, 
We've not had any of the ball really here. Noble, good tackle, but they've won it back again. There was no one helping him out there, trying to get the, the ball. And Mandzukic... Uh, oh, what? And it's... what Ravel Morrison's been sent up. What the hell? How? What? I'm confused. I didn't see anything there. And we're down to 10 men, and they've won a penalty. This is not good. This could be my first defeat as England manager. Croatia are a very good team, though, to be fair. But we're down to 10 men. What am I going to do? We're going to play counter, and we're going to we're going to play a bit more direct. Get clear ball to flanks and pump into box. Actually, no, it doesn't quite work. But clear ball to flanks, and yeah, go a bit more direct. Let's try that. But that is annoying. Ravel Morrison. Last game played well, got an assist for the goal. This game gets sent off. I guess he's a bit like a Gaza, isn't he? A bit unpredictable. Oh, it wasn't a penalty. I'm very confused. It was a free kick, fortunately. But I don't. I didn't really see what Ravel did. Okay, we're definitely on the back foot in this game, especially now we're down to ten men. And here goes Kovacic for Croatia. Uh oh. Rakitic, what a brilliant bit of play from them. Foddering with an excellent save, though, to tip it around the post. Wonderful passing. And that's wide from the corner. Right, so somehow it's 1-1 at half-time. We took the lead, but then deservedly Croatia got back into it. I'm going to have to change it up, because we're really lacking in midfield, and my assistants told me that. So I'm going to make some changes. I'm not going to have any wingers. If Phoebe's going to come off... Uh, Hmm, Austin, only allowed 45 minutes, that's fine. He's going to play up front as an advanced forward by himself. And then, Cork's going to play as a central midfielder. Defend. And then I'm going to bring on two attacking central midfielders in Ward Prowse. Playing as an advanced playmaker. In fact, I don't actually have any any other midfielders that can go there, do I? Eric Dyke and ah, Eric Dyke can go defensive midfield and Noble will be pushed up. Let's see. Someone did suggest try and dire in defensive midfield, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Noble as an advanced playmaker as well. Let's see how this works. I'm going to have to change the instructions, of course, because we can't clear ball to flanks now. We're going to exploit the middle and work the ball into the box. And we will t not go quite as direct. A bit mixed, I think. And we will try this. Let's see what happens then. Very lacking in the attacking midfielder area, but hopefully Will Prowse and Noble can get forwards and create some chances for Austin. Let's see how he does up front by himself. Uh-oh, dangerous free kick position for Croatia, and they've scored. Modric with the header. They're back in the game. Don't know what to do. Target's not playing particularly well at left back. Now, I put him in the team because of his amazing performance in the last England team, in the last setup. However, there's plenty other left backs that can break into the team. They can knock him off his perch off his second place perch. Danny Rose is the obvious second choice option behind Aaron Creswell. What do I do? Billy Jones can't really come off. I don't have anyone to play right back. Maybe I should go back to wingers. Maybe I could play one winger. I probably should do something a bit more attacking. In fact, I'm just going to go go back to wingers, I think. Um, I'm going to play. We'll, we'll, fit, we'll mix this up a bit. So Noble's going to play as a deep lying playmaker. We'll Prowse as an advanced playmaker as before. But I'm going to bring on Jordan Ibe for Cork on the right hand side as a winger. And then on the left I'm going to bring on Antonio again I guess. And play him as an inside forward. Let's see if this makes a difference. We're going to change it up again. We're going to go attacking. We're going to exploit the flanks and hit the early crosses into the box for Charlie Austin to hopefully put it in the back of the net. Let's see if this works then. We need to go and get back into this game. So let's go attacking. Good header from Modric there, pass foddering him. In fact, I might sub him off as well. Do I have another sub to make? One, two, I think I do. So Button can come on for fodder Fodderingham and see how he does in the last half an hour or so. I'm going to get in trouble <laughs> because Michael Keane and Target were only meant to play 45 minutes. But Carazwell can come on. He's injured. I could bring someone on for Michael Keane, but I just can't be bothered, to be honest. Who cares? 
Here go Croatia again. Are they going to get a third? Mandzukic is through. Tackle him, guys. Tackle him, Serna. Oh, it's it's three. Three one Kovacic. Ravel Morrison's let me down. I don't think he's going to be in the next England team, I'm afraid, unless he does magical stuff for Lazio. Serna with the cross. And this is going to be my first defeat as England manager. We beat Germany, but we can't do it against Croatia. And Target's not having a good game at left back. I don't think he's going to make the next team at this rate. Unfortunately. Oh no, it's four. We are getting thrashed. I'm going to go counter. Because attacking obviously isn't the right thing to do here. We are getting thumped by a very good Croatia team. Who deservedly are winning. The F football manager legend Cerner is on a 9.0. I'm going to make my last sub then. And I think it's going to be Scott Dan coming on for Michael Keane. Oh, I can't make any more subs. I've, ma I've made all my subs. Oh, I took... I just realised I took Dyer off, didn't I? I didn't mean to take Dyer off. Ah, oh, I think I'm going to have to rethink this tactic because we got destroyed by Germany but somehow won one nil. But once again we're getting destroyed in this game and it's just not worked for us this time. Against really strong opposition, we're going to struggle at the Euros. I need to... I need to make changes and against Wales I will test out some sort of tactic, I think. That suits this team a bit better. Maybe my alternative one, we'll see. Although wingers did work well in the last couple of games. Can we get another goal? It would be nice to get a second goal. Jordan Ibe, lovely ball through to Austin. Tackled. Ah. Not five, please. Not five. Get in there, Billy Jones. To be fair, Ravel Morrison has just let us down in this game. The rest of the team couldn't do much about it. And it is five. Mandzukic gets another. Oh, there's going to be changes to certain players who haven't played well today. But I suppose I can't be too harsh for the fact we're down to 10 men. But it is a bit embarrassing. 20 seconds to go then. I hope that is the last goal. Michael Keane does well there. Noble into Antonio. A few seconds left. This is it. Jordan Ibe. Blocked. And... That's the final whistle. A really bad result today. I'm not happy. It's one of those things, though. When you go down to 10 men, you can just completely implode. Perhaps I should have kept it on that three in central midfield tactic like I originally did, but never mind. Okay, so the next game is next year, in fact, against Wales in March. There's going to be a bit of a gap, but I'm going to holiday or just skip through to the Euro 2016 draw now and show that for the end of this video. So here we go, it's the, the group stage draw. Just to let you know what happens between episodes though, is I generally remove a lot of players from the squad, players that haven't played well for me or um, perhaps uh, have come into the team and I've tested them out and they've not quite worked. They obviously still have the chance of getting back into the team. I've given Charlie Austin a few chances. But this is the team as it stands at the moment, the players that I think uh, are strong enough to stay in the squad for next time, unless they're injured for the next squad. Um, I think Jack Court played pretty well over those couple games, so I'll probably give him another shot in the team. But let's go for the draw then. Let's have a look and see who we get in Euro 2016. So we're in the second seed group, so unfortunately we're not in that top one. So we could be drawn, well we will be drawn with one of these top guys. Holland, ironically, are in it, considering they didn't even make it to Euro 2016. So let's go. Well, we've got Italy, which... I would prefer Italy to Germany, Spain, Belgium or France, to be honest. Uh, Italy, obviously, a very strong team, though. Who's going to be the third draw? We've got Denmark. Could be tough. They're a decent side. And lastly, we've got Serbia. So it's certainly not an easy group, but I wouldn't say it's the worst group in the world. Israel have made it into Euro 2016 on this save. So that's the full draw. Ireland have made it in as well, as have Scotland. So Northern Ireland and Wales didn't actually make it on this save interestingly but we are playing Wales in the next episode uh, which will be just I think that one game unless I might organize another friendly there, there probably oh there probably will be an option to do more friendlies um, during that period and before Euro 2016 as well but thank you so much for watching this episode please hit that like button if you're enjoying the series so far lots of nice feedback from you guys enjoying it something a bit different um, I will see you in episode 5 Bye.